now this value chain concept it was the uh, it was idea of or uh, the theory of michael porter now this particular value chain it speaks about the classifications of all the activities that happens inside and around any business organization and which all together it creates a product or a service that the organization wants to render to the society now this particular idea of value chain analysis it was produced in connection to comparative or sorry in connection to competitive strategy which was proposed by michael porter now this value chain analysis it does takes the perspective of producer especially where it you know makes a partition in the business into different sets of activities and also about all the activities that happen inside one business organization now normally what happens in a business whether it produces a product or services is that it shall normally begins its operation with the inputs that the firm gets and it starts on completing all the company items and also goes into after sale services to clients now this value chain analysis it normally gives uh, some kind of you know supervision so that the organization is able to better recognize the strength and weaknesses by taking a uh, you know a grander uh, perspective of business from the perspective of producer now as you can see in the diagram that has been put up in your slide this value chain analysis it consists of five important activities the first one being inbound logistics the second one is operations the third one is outbound logistics then we have marketing and sales and we have service and all these five activities they are linked to four of the supporting activities that is procurement technology development human resource management and the infrastructure of the firm now what this particular analysis tells that all the exercise will have their own cost so the distinction between the aggregate expenses of the organization has and that exists between this and the offering cost gives the edge for the organization now what are these primary activities now primary activities they are specifically concerned with the creation of product or services with the creation or it can also be with the conveyance of a product or service uh, basically it is the manufacturing business we can tell so within primary activities we have five the first one is inbound logistics now what is this concerned about now inbound logistic activities it is concerned with getting the raw materials uh, maybe putting away and circulating all the inputs 
uh, either to the product they are producing or the service that they are rendering and it shall also include you know things such as materials handling it includes transportation it includes stock control and the next one is operations so what are this operation is something which changes all the inputs that are brought into the organization into a final product or a service and here things such as you know machine bundling get together testing and all other activities which helps in transferring the inputs into the final products shall be present the third one is outbound logistics now it is concerned with you know gathering storing and also dispersing the products but gathering gathering from the operations storing it and dispersing it among the clients now here things such as warehousing is there there shall be materials handling there shall be distribution of the products or services then comes marketing and sales so this gives you know uh, methods where by the organizations clients or buyers uh, are made mindful of the you know the item that the organization is offering and the benefit they can buy from it and it includes activities like you know deal organization publicizing and offering then we have services it includes all those activities which enhances or which maintains the value of the product or the service so it might include things such as you know in installation it includes repair maybe training also now if we normally see uh, than ever before firms engage in a very you know a wide range of service related activities uh, as we mentioned you know it includes things such as maybe repair after sales service warranty installation adjustment and so on so as we have this primary activities we have four of the supporting activities now supporting activities as the name suggests it is something which enhances you know the viability of the product or in other words if we have to tell you know it is something which enhances the proficiency of all these primary elements or primary activities so in that we have four uh, the first one being uh, procurement so what is this procurement now here the procedure what happens in the organization especially which is in numerous parts and which are in association with one another or which are in connection with one another uh, and now these are in connection with one another for especially securing the different kinds of assets or different kinds of inputs what we can tell and these inputs which are essential for the day to day working and the exercise of the organization all those things are spoken under 
procurement the second one that is there is technology development now whenever we speak about this technology development one thing that uh, we have to note is that all quality exercise it has characteristic of being innovative or being invented now this characteristic shall be present regardless of the possibility uh, that is simply what we call as now how so advances may be considered you know straightforwardly with an uh, particular item uh, uh, like uh, maybe research and development or some kind of item plan it could be or it can innovation could be in procedure also that is there might be an improvement in the process how uh, things would be produced or it can also be with specific assets uh, such as maybe uh, there would be you know upgrade in crude materials so technology development does not mean that there is development only over what to do over the things digitally it can be based on the procedure it can be on the assets that are being done also so that is technology development and we have human resource management so as the name suggests it is concerned with those activities uh, which are involved in you know every aspect of human resource that could be recruiting it can be managing training uh, developing and also rewarding people within the organization now uh, one more thing that is there under supporting activity is firms infrastructure so now what is this firms infrastructure speaks about now the firms infrastructure speaks about the formal frameworks for arranging uh, accounting quality control data administration and the structure and schedules that are you know a piece of uh, or what we can tell or it includes all those things how the organization normally deals in its day to day work so this particular value chain that we are speaking uh now it can help uh, normally for a business organization in examining examining the important position of the organization in different ways which are possible now uh, some things that are to be noted when we do value chain is that uh, there is something called as non specific portrayals of exercise now these non specific portrayals of exercise uh, they can offer the managers of the organization with some help especially in understanding the things as to you know if there is a bunch of activities which gives advantages to the organization's clients which are especially situated inside uh, the territories of the value chain then doing the analysis of 
this particular method would help organization know all such strengths and also there is something called as the quality anchor now this quality anchor it uh, add on add on to the you know the ability or the decision making of the manager to especially consider the different activities that play a important role in the organization's decision making so here within we'll have to know something called as the value network that is to tell that a corporate organization or a solitary organization normally uh, it does not attempt you know the greater part of uh, the quality exercise what we speak so there is generally specialization of a part of the organization so any one organization is a piece of you know a more extensive value chain <coughs> excuse me so this value network that we are speaking now it is a arrangement of you know between authoritative connection and connections that are important to make the product or service of the organization and along with all these things that are being done um an organization it should always be clear about what activities it should indulge itself and which of the activities it has to let go of or in other words which are the activities it has to do all the detail itself and which are the activities which it has to outsource and which are those activities which it has to give up on so on the other hand if you see since a great part of expense and also what we call as esteem creation uh, will be happening in supply and dispersion chains the managers of the business organization they need to comprehend this entire procedure and also they have to know how they can deal with all these types of linkages and connections to enhance the esteem among the client that is to tell take a example of cell phone now in this mobile phone when it reaches the final purchaser it is influenced not only by the activities undertaken within the manufacturing company itself but also by the quality of components from you know suppliers and the performance of the distribution now it is therefore important that managers should understand the basics of their organizations strategic capabilities in relation to the wide uh, wider value of network of the business organization <coughs> excuse me next one that we have is quantitative analysis uh now uh, that is to tell you know a business or this budgetary investigation strategy uh that the organization does all of this they try to you know comprehend conduct things by utilizing complex scientific and different factual data displaying technologies 
or what we call as estimation and exploration it is all this by allocating uh, the numerical worth to you know variables or elements that we call as so this quantitative examiners they attempt to recreate the reality scientifically so what i uh, you have seen the methods of quantitative analysis or forecasting business now this tells you what quantitative analysis is all about now quantitative analysis uh, it should be possible for a uh, various different reasons in business organization uh, maybe for uh, estimation execution is ass assessment or valuation of you know monetary instruments and it can likewise be utilized to anticipate you know uh, what we can call as genuine occasions um example could be changes in an offer cost now this quantitative analysis as the name suggests it is basically you know a method of measuring things uh, samples of quantitative analysis they try to fix or incorporate everything from financial ratios such as earning per ratio to something as complicated as discounted cash flow now the question might arise why is that uh, we have to use quantitative methodologies now this uh, quantitative methods uh, which we use for information analysis uh, it is uh, and it can sometimes prove to be extraordinary worth for the analysts so the main benefits uh, is that it normally provides a way to separate out the larger number of you know confounding factors that normally obscure the mean qualitative findings so the main benefit is that it provides the means to separate out the larger number of factors that can be confused with you know unnecessary facts for example now we shall consider a study or a research whose main goal is to take uh, the role of non wood tree products in the livelihood of uh, maybe small houses now this particular discussion happens with a number of groups and it can give rise to a large amount of qualitative information but then uh, the complex nature of interrelationship between the factors such as you know maybe the marketability of the products or distance from the road or maybe the access to market or percent of income delivered from sales or level of you know women participation now all such example it requires some degree of quantification of the data and a subsequent analysis which can happen by quantitative methods so so if at all such quantifiable segments of the information they are isolated then consideration can be centered around attributes that are of you know more individual individualistic qualitative nature so quantitative analytical approach it additionally permits the reporting of you know outline of results in numerical terms so it could be given with a predetermined level of certainty now the utilization of quantitative methods uh, in examining the qualitative information it can always lend greater credibility uh, to research findings by providing the means to quantify you know the degree of confidence in the research results so the next question might be 
when this quantitative analysis approach shall be useful this is most useful when there is you know requirement for information uh, outline crosswise over numerous uh, kinds of participatory procedures or focus group discussion or in leading uh, seasonal changes or when it is venn diagram so information summarizes uh, suggests that some normal elements should always be present over such elements so along these lines the estimation of you know a quantitative analysis does exist uh, when it is uh, easy to recognize the main points that happens uh, because of possible larger participation number in the discussion which is aimed at you know understanding a particular research theme so all these things this quantitative data can be used so some of the example that has been given is graphs linear regression and hypothesis testing so now this graphs uh, as you know it is a method where we sort out the information uh, especially with the specific end goal Uh, and because of this uh, it helps in uh, understanding uh, about those particular elements in a better way and thereby effortlessly identify the different designs so these graphs can be used for quantitative analysis and can be found at you know bars lines and it can also be uh, and if we speak about this you have you might have observed that you know the most uh, widely kind of chart uh, that we have under quantitative analysis is histogram now histogram if you remember uh, it is a visual diagram uh, uh, which we normally draw by arranging the data into ranges then we have linear regression now even linear regression they are a very popular quantitative analysis tool that we use uh, here under we try to understand the relationship between two different relatable data now if at all there exists a strong correlation then these two sets of data can be a graphically spoken so that predictions can be made then we have hypothesis testing now it is used by business when they are determining the probability of you know an event happening under specific condition now it is generally done by uh, things such as collecting customer data from service and then using hypothesis testing quality analysis tools uh, to determine uh, the happening of uh, such events now uh, one thing that is worth remembering under hypothesis analysis is that the accuracy of the testing normally depends on the size of the sample population so now speaking more about this uh, as against qualitative uh, analysis or uh, quantitative analysis we have qualitative analysis or we can also call this as qc or qualitative comparative analysis now this technique was originally developed by charles rain in 1987 i had said about this um now this compare
sorry yes now this comparative analysis it is used for analyzing you know data sets uh, by listing and by counting all the combinations of variables which are observed uh, within the data that has been collected and afterwards applying the rules of you know logical interference to determine which descriptive interference or implications the data supports now this particular method it is used normally as a part of uh, sociology and depends on the you know parallel uh, rationale of uh, uh, algebra and also it uh, makes an attempts to endeavor uh, to guarantee that every single convincible mix of variations that can be made over the course under the consideration that has been made and we have qualitative analysis now uh, this particular thing i need not explain once again we have already discussed a lot about this uh, here uh, under qualitative analysis we try to use as much as precise inputs as possible and this analysis uh, it uh, helps in managing immaterial inaccurate worries that have a place with the you know social and experimental domain uh, as against to all those scientific ones now this qualitative uh, analysis it depends much on the knowledge which are necessary by the machines now one more important thing about qualitative analysis that we did not speak about is that whenever we speak about qualitative approach a purely qualitative analysis it is always open to blind spots or uh, the fact that uh, it is always open for personal bias and a lot of times this quantitative measures can act as a check on such problems then one more more we have is comprehensive analysis now this comprehensive analysis uh, it uh, refers to the complete analysis of all the relevant aspects of a company uh, company's financial position especially now the main aim of such comprehensive analysis uh, is normally to give you know a complete wide picture of the money related status of an organization and this status it tries to understand both in present time and also anticipated into what might be happening in the future now doing a complete examination always requires assembling you know most of the data from organizations financial reports it might include you know both the current report and also the report from the past now normally all this data it is used to ascertain the money related proportions uh, now normally when the investors you know set out to choose which organization might help in gaining more and more capital they regularly do a thorough examination of 
ದ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಮನಿ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಚೂಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಮೆಂಡೆಬಲ್ ವೆಂಚರ್ ಟು ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡರ್ಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯೂ now with the same intention the organization themselves uh, may wish to figure out how well their uh, numbers are going up to as compared to different rivals in the same business so one of the essential variable to consider when performing you know a uh, better examination of an organization is that you know the outcome might be exact as the information which goes into it so this is particularly genuine when a uh, business organization is going to extend the money related status eventually now since any future predictions can only be approximations or probability the data behind those estimates they must be extremely precise so that they are able to prevent any kind of incorrect options now when the majority of the information is collected the next step that we do under comprehensive analysis uh, is that uh, we normally come up with financial ratios now these uh, ratios they generally take one piece of financial information and it tries to divide it into another piece to come up with a ratio so ratios can be used to you know interpret the strength of uh, every important aspect of companies financial operations including its profitability liquidity debt levels cash flow and so on so now one thing about this ratios is that all these proportions that you do can be any time they'll have little use uh just as the raw data if you s- do not know how to interpret the results and one more topic that we have to see is that structuring the organizational profile now what is the structuring the organizational profile hmm. now the organization profile it normally speaks of one particular association it speaks of the key impacts uh, on how this particular organization works and also it speaks about the different difficulties the organization face now this particular organization profile it is most suitable or uh, it is best or the beginning stage for self evaluation now it can be very much important especially for two main reasons that is for organizational description and organizational situation that in understanding these two the organizational profile it normally helps the business organization in identifying the holes in the key data and also it brings into limelight any key execution prerequisites 
and also the results of all such things. Now this organization profile as uh, you can see uh, it consists of two items that is organizational description and organizational situation. Now this organizational description it speaks about what are the key organizational characteristics or it speaks about what is the main way of doing business. How can it be differentiated from others? Now, it tells that despite, you know, the working environment and the association that the organization has, it's with important clients, suppliers, second economy you know companies and partners it should always include organizational en environment and organizational relationship now when we tell organizational environment uh, it includes things like the product that is being offered the vision and mission of the company the profile of the workforce the assets the organization has and all the regulatory requirements. Now, when you speak about organizational relationship, it is uh, the simple things that as organizational structure, the relationship between the customer and stakeholder, and the relationship between the supplier and the partners. All this shall be mentioned there within. Now, coming to the organizational situation, it speaks about what is the situation of the organization or it speaks about the aggressive surrounding and the key difficulties of the organization, the focal points and the framework that is necessary to change uh, quite a few things if it is necessary. And in that we have three that is competitive environment, strategic context and performance improvement. Whenever we tell competitive environment, uh, there we have three that is competitive position, competitiveness changes and comparative data. So what is this competitive position? It asks the questions such as you know, what is the business's aggressive position? Or what is the business relative size and development in the industry it has been situated or in the sectors that the business serve or uh, it also answers questions such as you know what number of and what sorts of contenders does the organization has. Now when we speak about competitiveness changes it speaks about what are the key changes and uh, if there are any key changes which are influencing the aggressive circumstances uh, which includes you know changes that create opportunities for innovation and collaboration whether they are appropriate all such things shall be discussed then we have comparative data so it speaks about what are the key sources of you know similar kind and focused information which are accessible from within the industry what are the important resources of you know information which are accessible from outside the industry what are the restrictions uh, which influence the capacity of the organization to utilize this information all things shall be discussed then we have strategic context. It speaks about what are the you know important difficulties and points of interest in the zones of business, operations, societal obligations, and workforce. Then we have performance improvement system. So it speaks about what are the key elements of you know performance improvement system, including things as of uh, forms for assessment and changes of key authoritative 
tasks and the proposal, you know, processes that the organization has. So, doing this uh, organizational profile, also one of the important things. Now, this uh, organization profile. Now, we can tell that it is uh, some kind of snapshot of our organization. It speaks about the key influences on how the organization operates. And it speaks about the key challenges the organization faces. So, as we discussed earlier, it is one of the most appropriate uh, starting point when it comes for self-assessment of the organization. Now, having said, this is uh, about all the things that we could speak under chapter 2, that is strategic analysis, where we spoke a lot about the internal analysis of the organization.